Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Today is 9-11. Now, for those of us that are old enough to remember, that was a pivotal moment in American history. And what I've learned, that there are young people in Afghanistan that don't even know that this happened. So we're going to take a moment to acknowledge, to remember, and just to take a look at 9-11. And then uh, we're going to talk to my dear friend, Colonel Von Hahn, from the Office of Veterans Services, and we'll talk more about what's going on with today's veterans. These are the towers before the uh, airplanes flew into them on 9-11. And this is that moment when the planes actually flew in to the towers. It was 4 o'clock a.m. Hawaii time, and just watching that was unbelievable that this kind of thing could happen. And it, it just breaks my heart even now to look at it. So many people were killed. So many things happened. So many things that these pictures here are the lights that the New York uh, uses where the towers were. Let me tell you just one of the subtleties of 9-11. They were out to break our democracy. So in New York on that day, Tuesday it was, that they had planned an election. So when they shut the towers, when they that ended the election. The towers were, those towers were in the heart of the uh, financial district. So that was planned to disrupt the finances of America because New York is the heart of the financial district for the United States. And then they went to uh, the Pentagon. And so if you look at the whole picture, the planning, the election, the finances, and the Pentagon, those are the heart of our democracy. And they really went after our democracy on that day. Thankfully, everybody, in spite of all the things, all the people that died, all the people that are still dying because of it, we as a come are standing tall. Now, let's go to... Um, our um, guest, Colonel Ron Allen. Colonel, good morning. Marshall, yeah, thanks for allowing me to, uh, to join you today, and thank you so much for remembering Patriots Day, you know, and never forgetting um, loss of life and uh, the amount of um, emotional scars that live with us today that we may never forget. Uh, uh, the things that we are doing today, especially those who serve today in uniform, stand for freedom. So thank you so much, Marta, for allowing me to come on your show today. Well, you know, it is a special day for, for those of us. Um, since the Civil War, I have had somebody in the military in every generation, including my grandson, who is new to the Air Force. And so there was no way to allow this day and not acknowledge it. So thank you for all you do. So tell us about what the Office of Veterans Services, that, now that's the state office. So tell us what you do as the state office. Thank you, Marcia. And the state office of veterans services serves in a, a lot of different um, activities, but mainly it's provide benefits and entitlements sponsoring to our, uh, our veterans um, who are transitioning out of the military, uh, veterans who serve in war campaigns, and uh, provide them um, support for disability claims and uh, help them navigate through the VA, uh, the Veterans Affairs process. We also help manage the eight state veteran cemeteries uh, throughout the state and uh, in partnership with uh, the Veterans Affairs Cemetery Association and administration. And then we also take care of 
just day-to-day activities dealing with, we may work some legislative issues dealing with veterans, uh, for example, uh, World War II Filipino veterans working with um, uh, many of the veterans groups that are out there to support them and, and the requirements for the Retro Gold Medal Award, the Chinese uh, World War II veterans as well, and other related groups, and just trying to find ways to help veterans. As you know, uh, Marsha, you and I have worked very closely uh, on many projects. There's not enough that we can do to support our veterans. But in a nutshell, that's what we do. We've got offices on Kauai, on Maui, Hilo and Kona. Uh, we do outreach to Lanai and Molokai. We also have uh, several offices here on Oahu, over at Diamond Head, and right at the Tripler Army Medical Center. Wow, that's a big. How many uh, locally? How many veterans do you have in the state of Hawaii? You know, right now the you know the state is just coming up in uh, in about a year, right, March, just about 2020. But based on the latest census notes that we. Um, reflected from the VA state summaries is showing between 117,000 and 121,000. Uh, Honolulu Civil Beat fact checked us about two or three years ago. We came out with uh, approximately one out of every 10. It's about 1.3, 1.4 million residents in Hawaii. But one out of every 10 uh, resident is a veteran. So it's a pretty high, uh, pretty high uh, ratio out here, and it does not include a lot of the active duty military members, as you all well know, there's a huge footprint out here in Hawaii, approximately 50 to 60,000 active duty members, uh, notwithstanding about uh, four or 5,000 uh, National Guard members and reservists as well. Eventually, all those folks are going to turn into veterans as well or have already earned veteran status because of their campaign, combat campaigns, and uh, other related things that they have done. So uh, roughly that's about, that's about the demographic for veterans in Hawaii. Well, now, this is a, a strange thing. The Coast Guard is not part of the Department of Defense. What about them? Well, we serve Coast Guard members as well. Um, you know, we consider them a part of the uh, all of the different components. They do come out of the Department of Transportation. But as you well know, um, because of your, your husband's background as a uh, submariner in the United States Navy, the Coast Guard plays an integral part uh, out here in, in the islands for their uh, rescue and relief operations and humanitarian drug interdiction and a lot of other related things. So we do have Coast Guard members that we support, we provide honors details. They're immersed in almost any of the activity and things that we do out here. They're, uh, they're, they're an incredible component um, of the total force. So now, they're included in that number that you gave us. And that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Now, remember now, veterans normally are those that are coming out of the service and uh, become uh, veteran status. So notwithstanding, those uh, 50,000 plus would also include members of the United States Coast Guard. Oh, you know, when they had the, your president had the government shut down, they were separate and were, were not paid like the other people, and that's why I was asking about the difference in the Coast Guard and the regular Department of Defense. Right. I know they come under the State Department of Transportation, but again, they serve a very vital role in, uh, in many different of our missions out here. And frankly speaking, uh, we could not do the things we do out here without the United States Coast Guard, you know, and their rescue missions and the things that they do out there. But they do have a funding, a different funding uh, stream. Uh, we support them nonetheless in any of our activities here State Office of Veterans Services. So now, what is the difference between the State Office of Veterans Services and the federal um, VA? What, what's the difference, or is yeah, there a difference? Very, that's a very great question, you know. So in the state, um, Marshall, we've got state benefits and things. Sometimes uh, we offer up things for 100% VA-rated disabled vets, some relief for some car registration, uh, a little bit of relief on state property taxes, uh, and we also give them some relief also for special adaptive housing after they've gone through the federal VA and exhausted all the requirements. And so from the state perspective, we would help advocate for the veteran in submitting their disability claim to the VA. In many cases, um, VA claims are adjudicated, and uh, sometimes they're required to go to appeal when they're not not approved initially. 
and our office would advocate for them and provide them uh, support, case support, uh, to meet an appeals judge. In many cases, the VA, if they're helping you submit the requirements, you know, they will do their very best to put the requirement in for you, but when it comes to appeals, that's where they're going to have to stop, and that's where you have to, have to get a veteran's advocate. Uh, there are many out there um, that are called veteran service organizations. Um, most times they are accredited. The state um, office of veteran services, all of our class of four are accredited. That means three months of um, uh, training and three months of uh, shadowing before they even take a claim. And um, they have to be fully accredited by the VA to be able to do that. So we're a full-blown advocate. And again, uh, we see the veteran when they leave the service, Marsha, and they go through the disability claim process. We see them as they progress up to the 100% level, in some cases total and permanent. And we also are there for them at the end of life when we help them with their mortuary and next of kin with burial requirements. So that's a, that's that that is kind of a, a big difference in, in how we uh, how we work. Now we like to think when we work with our VA counterparts, we are complementary. Better case work we do better fully developed thing that we put together that will help our VA counterparts to make the proper adjudication to support our veterans. And so we're more of a complement. We are a partner. But again, uh, we see ourselves as more complementary, making sure that we can help veterans, again, we mentioned this earlier, navigate through the process, be successful in, uh, in the needs um, and requirements. Now, so your department, you all are state employees, is that it, or Department of Defense, which? Yeah, so we work under the state uh, Department of Defense. Uh, Major General Joe Logan, the Adjutant General, is our, uh, our uh, cabinet member, if you will. Uh, deputy is uh, Brigadier General Kenneth Hara. And so we're one of the six divisions. You know, on Department of Defense, you've got Emergency Management Agency, you've got Army Guard, Air Guard, Homeland um, Security, Hawaii Youth Challenge Academy, and the last one is the State Office of Veteran Services. Wow, that's quite a bit. That, and most of us don't know, you know, we just know VA, we don't know all of these things, but this is wonderful that, that the state does these things. And this is, so do we go to you first? Well, you know, you've been a friend for so long, but does a veteran who doesn't know, uh, do they stop, they go to you first and then to the feds, or does it matter where they start? Yeah, you don't know, watch that's a great question. They are more than welcome to give us a call first, and we would help them uh, start off with, with the right, right step forward. You know, oftentimes, number one issue is to get uh, your eligibility uh, paperwork done. As you well know, the DD Form 214, the uh, Status of discharge is the most important document, um, and that helps you to get qualified, to get entered into the VA system and qualify you for other related things. And our office out here uh, has tie in uh, some of the digitized uh, DD Form 214s and, and some hard copy archival data that comes to if you're, if you're home of record, home of residence that you designated before you separate and retire here in Hawaii, you should probably have a copy of that. You have your own record. So that would be the, the first place to, to come to uh, at our offices out here. And then we would go ahead and try to help you uh, with the next step, which would be do you have a disability claim that you'd like to file? This is the evidence base that you have on that, the military uh, orders and your military medical records, and we'll build we'll build a case for you, you know, and work that through and help you throughout that uh, process. If it does not get approved the first time out, we're required to go to appeals. We will help you prepare the appeals and face the uh, federal judge and move that forward uh, for you. And so we just do a lot of different things out here. We get um, a lot of queries for uh, folks that just need help with sometimes with discharge uh, upgrades. Sometimes we have uh, individuals that require issues where um, things dealing with educational issues that we try to help them navigate. We kind of espouse to the no wrong door approach that, uh, you know, if we can't help you, we're going to find that someone who can lead you to the right agency so that you can get the help that you require. Um, we don't espouse to, no, we can't help you. Sorry, that, that's not going to happen with any of our offices out here. We are, we're, uh, we're very, very attuned to what the veterans' needs are. And many of my concerts out here have been in the business for uh, 
for many, many years, and most, a lot of them are veterans themselves. So, a veterans helping veterans. And I hope that helps. Well, I have another question that I, I was talking to a friend, and he was in um, Vietnam War, but he was in the Guard and in his state. But they never saw active, I mean, they did not, they were on active duty, I guess, but they were never sent to Nam. And he feels that he's not entitled to any um, compensation or support from the VA. Is he because he was in the National Guard in his home state, but he lives here now? He's been yes, arrested sir. for 30 years. Obama, he left office, Marcia, and uh, signed a, uh, an executive order basically saying those who have served uh, with honorable service, any component, whether it be guard, reserve, active duty, uh, and serve again with, with, with an honorable um, uh, status uh, throughout their tenureship, is considered a, a veteran. Now, what each veteran received as far as uh, central compensation and, uh, and other related things is, is dependent on uh, the veteran's career uh, experiences and combat activity and so forth. As you all know from your husband, you know, there, there's no two veterans alike. You know? And so now it becomes what are they really uh, uh, entitled to for benefits we go through and navigate through the system. So an individual of the Guard uh, may have some combat time um, that might show some connect service connection that would lead them into um, uh, support to the VA, and or it could have a line of duty that happened on a drill weekend. Uh, say, for example, uh, they had to come up to Clipper to get uh, support and uh, health care. And uh, the commander at that time developed a line of duty, and they may be eligible now just because it was showing service connection. That has happened before, even though they never deployed, even though they never went into combat duty, but they might have gotten hurt on a drill on a drill weekend. So there are many different case and points. Again, we would uh, help you and help an individual that would come in there to try to help navigate that um, that that situation and. Try our very best to uh, to show them, you know, uh, how how it, how they can submit things uh, properly, and then we would stand behind the things that we would submit. So many times, uh, my senior counselors and things have been been to thousands of different case works and things, and we we really have a really good understanding of what it takes to submit uh, documentation. Again, we we're perfectly aligned. We work right out here at Tripler. We're uh, right here on the benefit side, and we uh, continually do work. With the VA again in this partnership, so give us a shot. Again, everyone's a little bit different. Um, there's really not a one size fits all. But President Obama did say, as far as veteran is concerned, those who have served uh, honorably in any service component is considered a veteran. Uh, now, uh, would you give tell us how we can connect with you? That is your telephone, this telephone number, the website, or how? Absolutely. Absolutely, Marcia. Central line out here is 808-433-0420. That's 808-433-0420. Our central um, email account is OVS at Hawaii.gov. That's OVS at Hawaii.gov. And so you can link up uh, any way to, uh, to tie in with this there. We, uh, if you put in um, dod.hawaii.gov, it'll link you into the uh, State Department of Defense website. In there, you'll see Veteran Services. You can just tap to that, and it'll lead you to the protocol to connect with us. Uh, and again, uh, we've got Neighbor Island. Um, up, you call the uh, that central line. We'll help you connect with the Neighbor Island folks as well. Uh, if you're on, uh, if you reside on a Neighbor Island. Uh, Again, we're happy to, to connect with you and link with you. So now you do, we did, <laughs> lots of things together, including the 60th anniversary of the Vietnam War. Was it 60? Yeah, that was uh, a conflict uh, about almost, almost 10 years ago, uh, Marcia. You were very instrumental. We had that wonderful uh, ceremony here at Kaiser Auditorium up in um, 
the Bromley Medical Center, you had made that special menu of, uh, I believe it was Spam. Spam. Spam, Hershey's chocolate, and Coca-Cola. We were, yes, that was about, because of the veterans, these were all Korean War veterans, and that's what Uncle Sam issued was Spam, or Hershey's, and uh, Coke. And then, of course, you've got to be my age to know this, but Hershey created a special kind of bar that could fit in their pockets and didn't melt. And so that was the reason. So for that event, Coca-Cola gave us the souvenir, the original little pretty little bottles, and the young man that gave us all the Hershey chocolates had no idea of any of this because he was much too young to have ever, he didn't know what the war was. And uh, and then we had the spam, of course. A little uh, war was very touched, uh, brought back a lot of poignant uh, memories for them, and I know uh, we did that 60th anniversary services for commemoration honoring our Korean War vets on Kauai, Maui, uh, also on Hawaii Island as well. And, you know, we, we just continue to do things. Now, they're coming up on the 70th next year, so definitely um, we want to kind of look, look forward on that to see what the next things that the state and you know, nationally we may do uh, for these um, distinguished veterans. Like we did for the 50th. Commemoration of the Vietnam War about two years ago. Yes. So the state run a week long of events. Uh, we had a concert with uh, Tony Orlando. We had a, a Waikiki parade and uh, we had this joint ceremony up at Punch Bowl with the county and the state. One of the very few times they've combined resources. But that might have been the first thank you for those, those Vietnam era veterans yes. that for it, you know. Pretty amazing and stuff. I want you to know that I was in the parade. And, of course, and I had two husbands, or had, had one, and I have currently, both of which served in Vietnam. So I carry two flags in the parade, <laughs> of course, <laughs> They're to honor both of their services. Um, but, of course, no one ever, of course I did. It didn't come as a surprise to anybody. Um, you know, uh, looked at the World One Centennial, which just concluded out here with a big uh, ceremony almost about a year ago at the Natatorium, and that goes back to the legacy of the, the Native um, sons and daughters from Hawaii that served in the Great War uh, with the 100-year descent centennial that we honored, and many of their legacy members, their big grandchildren, and so forth, that carried that forward. That uh, that, that people from Hawaii actually participated and had a major roles in, in a lot of the war campaign. So I thank you personally for what you're doing and continue to do to emphasize to help veterans across the state, especially their loved ones. We can never forget um, the sacrifices made by the families, spouses, children, you know, uh, community members that are rallied behind those who serve in uniform. And I'm, I'm very thankful for you because of your uh, heralded and, uh, and your pivotal things. Uh, you know, you are... Uh, Tremendous um, mechanism for, for getting things done, and especially in supporting our veteran community. And I want to thank you personally for that. Well, thank you. And uh, let me tell this one last thing before we go. Uh, the morgue here on Oahu ran an ad that there was a veteran who was unclaimed, and I couldn't stand it. So. I said, I will claim him, and my husband says, you do what? I, I will claim him. He cannot go. I could not have a veteran go unclaimed. So that was a weekend. I called Ron on repeatedly all night until he finally called me back, and I said, and you know this, Ron, I said, we have to go get him. I cannot handle anybody going unclaimed. So you and your staff, did a wonderful job, absolutely marvelous job, of giving him the proper burial. It was wonderful. And he wasn't alone. The amount of people that showed up that knew him, that cared, was tremendous. So thank well, you for not letting him. We were the genesis for that. We worked very closely with the VA and with our cemetery team members. Um, 
much blow down involved. There's just a lot of folks involved with that. You know, um, those are the kind of things that uh, really warm our hearts the most, you know. And as you pointed out, Marcia, that veteran had many family members and brothers and sisters. And uh, you brought them all together. And, and I appreciate you because uh, you were the fire starter that made that happen. And we were very proud and, uh, and, and to serve in capacity to support that veteran and his service to our nation. There was no way, no way that I could imagine a veteran being unclaimed. That just, I, I just broke my heart. So, of course I claimed it. Of course I did. It was just, what else did I do? So, well, I thank you, too, for all you do and for always being there for me and for all the veterans, even though dependents aren't uh, cared for by the VA. But that's okay. Thank you for all you do. We appreciate it, uh, Asha. we got a great team in the OVS. Uh, again, you know, our mantra is we can't do enough. We're always striving. The busier we are, the more things we get done. And uh, we can't thank you enough again for uh, what you do to support us and uh, for your constant recognition of veterans and their family members. Thank you so much. Well, now, are you going to march with the city today, this evening? Yeah. They've already started at 12.15 today. Oh, it is. It's already started. Yeah, with the uh, first responders and the police yes. and uh, EMS, I believe, also fire. And I want to say the military is also out there today. So 12.15 uh, today, they've already started their march. Well, again, thank you for your service. Thank you, the VA, for all you do for all the veterans. And, I, and again, for taking the time to spend with us today. Thank you so much as well, Marsha. Aloha, and we will see you next time.